what we're going to talk about today is um, a good place to start with memory training always is a thing called a memory palace and how you go about using them um, because they can be used for a really wide variety of, of learning objectives. So, um, so I'm just going to walk you through that as a basic kind of memory technique uh, and how that works and give you a little bit of a, an example. Um, and then you can ask some questions and then we'll do something a little bit more complex so you can see how you can apply that for more difficult learning uh, and you'll get the chance to ask questions as well. And um, just one more thing going forward, if there's something in a particular week that you'd really like to cover, I know some of you got some, some ideas to me and that was fantastic. Like someone said they'd love to learn um, all the capital cities in the world, you know, all these different things that you can use as examples. Um, what you want to do is you want to come along to these lessons and you want to see them as not, um, not what, what actual information am I going to learn today, like the capital cities, but really how can I apply those techniques to learn whatever it is I want to learn and how can I improve my memory? So, um, so if you see one week, oh, this week we're going to look at how you'd go about learning computer coding and you're not at all interested in computer coding, that's fine. It's still going to be worth your while because you'll see how you would go about learning something like that. So really you're exercising your mind and learning how to learn faster. Does that make sense so far? Give me a thumbs up if, um, if it does. Awesome. And if you've got your video off, that's fine as well. You can actually still give me a thumbs up. There's a little, um, there's a little reactions button down the bottom so you can do like an electronic thumb up, thumbs up as well. And that works just as well. So we'll just jump into it. Um, so a memory palace, the, uh, hopefully everyone had a little look at the, um, the blog that I sent them. If you didn't get a chance to do that, that'll be fine as well. Um, but basically, you know, you hear this term memory palace or mind palace and memory athletes use that terminology a lot. And when I first heard about them, I thought that they sounded like, you know, something like a magic trick and a bit ridiculous, um, but they're actually very useful. And so basically what they are is a place that you know well already that you use to place information into. So because as humans, we have a really good memory already for places we've visited and for pathways, you know, like if you think about your kitchen or your bathroom, you can see a, you remember a lot of detail and you remember it without even trying. So you know what color the, you know, what color the floor is, where things are in the room. And you would learn that, you know, if you visited a new place, a new house, um, and you, you know, you went for dinner at someone's house, and then you came home from dinner. That night, if you went over their house, you would remember a lot of information, a lot of detail about their house. Now, if you just read that information, you wouldn't remember it. And that's because our visual memories are already very advanced. So all we do with this thing called a memory palace is use that skill to attach new information that we don't know yet. So we'll do a little example and it's a really simple one to start with. So we've got this shopping list here and what we're basically gonna do is we're gonna use a memory palace to remember it. Just as a little example to check we're all on the, on the, same, on the same page. So I want you to start outside this place that you've chosen. So you've got somewhere that you know well and you're outside this place. And then you wanna just go inside, just inside the front door to this place and you wanna choose a location there. So you wanna choose um, either like there might be a little table or there could be that's where there's bags or there might be a, a picture on the wall. So you wanna look in your head and see what you see if you just came in the front door of this place. So is everyone, everyone's there with me? You know what I'm talking about and even though it sounds mad, you're there, good. Um, so there, what we wanna do is we wanna place the first item. So the first item is bread. So um, if I was actually on my way to the shopping, at, you know, on the way to go and do my grocery shopping, um, I would visualise whatever sort of bread I wanted. So let's pretend we want a baguette, so a long, crunchy French breadstick. So that's what we want to buy. So I'm going to grab that piece of that bread um, and I'm just inside my front door and I'm not just going to put the bread there, but I'm going to interact it with the location there. So um, 
So I'm actually not using my house. I'm using a different house at the moment because I used mine today for training. So you, you alternate memory palaces, but we'll talk about that some other time. So just inside this house uh, that I'm imagining, um, I see there's some, there's some shoes lined up. So I've got my children's shoes, basically. My, my children's shoes are all there and their school bags and everything. And I'm going to get this breadstick and I'm going to, I'm going to make up some little story to help me remember it. And so I'm going to go, okay, I'm really cranky. I've had a really bad day and I'm going to, I'm going to get the breadstick and go and smash the bags and the shoes and all the crumbs are falling down into the shoes and you can see it all getting lost in there. So wherever your first location is, I want you to take a breadstick, French breadstick and make up a visual story with it. So you don't just want to place the bread there, you maybe want to stamp on it or smash it or smear it against the wall, do something with it. And then, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> you're so lovely, all of you, you're all like. <laughs> um, then you want to go to your next location. Um, so when I say next location, you want to choose a place that's logical next in order. So you don't want to go straight from there into the bathroom or something, you want to go, Okay, if I move about a metre, where, where am I? And so if I moved about a metre in this place, I'm thinking of um, there's a door handle that goes to another room. And that's good too because what I want to do and what you, what you want to try and do is you want to try and change heights. So if you've put your first location on the ground, you want to try and put the next one up a little bit higher or something like that. So, um, and it can be abstract too. It doesn't need to make sense. It could be, you know, sticking to the ceiling, to the roof. Um, so choose your next location. And the next thing on my list is um, croissants. So now that I've said the ceiling, I, I've suddenly have changed my mind. I'm going to choose the ceiling above this door frame because um, I haven't learned this list before either. So, um, so... I'm going to get croissants and I'm just going to stick them. I'm going to press them up on the ceiling, on the roof. And as I'm pressing up the first one and the second one, the first one's falling down on my head and I get the croissants and I stick it back up. And then I look up and I see there's buttery, you know, the butter has made a, a stain on the roof. So, so make sure you're at your next location and do the same thing. Do something interactive with croissants. Something else I want to just point out here, um, you'll see that this list is in an order that makes sense. So this is so that when I go to the supermarket and I'm getting this information back out of my head, it's in the right order so I don't have to go all over the supermarket. So that's something else you always want to think about as well. You know, it could be that you're remembering something for a university exam or something like that. And um, a classic example I always think of is I had to remember um, the African nations and their GDP in order from smallest to biggest. So that was perfect for a memory palace because I started at the smallest and went through to the biggest. So you always want to order your information before you start this process in a sensible way. Um, so then hopefully, has everyone got an image for the croissants? Yep. And the other thing is, is you want to make sure as well that with your image, you haven't just put one croissant because you want to remember it's lots of croissants that you want, not just one. Then I'm going to go to what would be a logical next location for me. Um, and a logical next location for me in this memory palace is a little stairway um, that went up to a second level. Um, and so if you've got, you go to wherever would be logical next, it might be another kind of one meter further. Um, but you can put them quite close together, these, these locations, and it will still be fun. So just choose somewhere in your head. And now you want to make an image for onions. So this time I'm going to let you kind of think about what you want the image to be, but try and make it kind of humorous and interactive. So a bit funny. So it's almost like creating a movie or a cartoon. So then hold up a thumb when you've got it. 
<laughs> some of you are very quick and then some of you are being very serious like we're learning something very serious. it's great i love it um so so just so you know for my you know my image was i had two ideas one of them is because they're on the stairs the onions they're either like bouncing down the stairs or otherwise someone is trying to walk up the stairs but because there's onions on them they're just sort of they're slipping on them so Basically, with this type of learning, what will happen is you're improving how quickly you can be creative and you're also practicing your memory, you know, you're exercising your memory as well. So, so when you first start doing this, this is like, this seems like a lot of work, but you'll get very quick at this so that I can be driving to my shops and I can make up a hundred, you know, hundred item list as quick as I can think them. I just put the next one in, the next one in, and you get very good at it. So then we're going to go to our next location. Um, so I'm going to go up my stairs. So you choose your next place. And we're going to put some carrots. So I don't think these should be ordinary carrots though. I think these carrots should have little arms and legs and they're holding hands with each other and they're doing like a little, like a little Mexican or, uh, what do they do in Texas? Boot scoot, you know, they go one, two, three, uh. And they're all holding hands, these little carrots, in your next location doing a little Zumba dance of some description. So let me know when your carrots are dancing in your location. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> good. Everyone's good? Got, got your dancing carrots? Yeah, awesome. Then on to the next location. Remember, you're trying to change the heights and the angles here. So, um, so my dancing carrots are actually just on the floor at, at floor height. So I'm going to choose the wall that's just next to that. And we've got tomatoes. And I'm going to just, I'm just going to throw the tomatoes against the wall and see them splattering on that, on my white wall there. Um, so do something with tomatoes that you're going to remember. But, but not just... If they're splattering, you know, not just splattering, you almost want to feel like you, you, you want to involve as many of your senses as you can. So you want to sort of smell what it would smell like in your head, you know, and see the colour, you know, what colour is the wall that it's splattering onto and, you know, would some splatter back onto you, you know, would it come back onto your face and, you, you know, would it make a sound as it hit? So you want to try and incorporate as many of your senses as you possibly can as you do that as well. Then, I'm just going to assume everyone's with me. Then we're going to go into your next location. For me, it's a, there's a bathroom there now. Um, and so the first part of that bathroom for me, I'm just going to use the sink. I always like sinks. They work really well. Um, and it's potatoes. So I'm just going to see the potatoes. Um, it's a round sink like this. It's a round basin. So I'm just going to see the potatoes sort of like racing and then jumping up and then going round and round like this. Um, and maybe they're not washed potatoes, you know, they're the dirty ones, so they're leaving a dirty, they're leaving dirt marks in the sink. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to have to clean that. That's a big mess. So you go to where your next, where your next location is. And you don't have to use my image, but you just want to try and make it funny. Just the first thing that comes into your mind where you can clearly see the potatoes and if you can interact, interact them with the location. So... Um, what I mean by that is, you know, I saw the dirt mark on my sink. That helps as well because it's like a link in your brain to the information. Is everyone good so far? Do you reckon you've got the list so far? You can remember the list? Yeah. Um, then we want to go to your next location and I'm going to try and drop down a level. So there's a little... Um, tower rack in where I'm going next. So I'm going to go down a level and it's two avocados that I want at the shops. So, um, so you've got to sort of think of something that's, that you're going to remember. It doesn't have to be too fancy. Like it could be, again, they could be, I can see two avocados. Um, one's doing a handstand and the other one's standing on top of the other's feet, sort of balancing. And I'm hoping that they don't fall over because they'll get bruised and then I won't be able to eat them. So I just sort of put some thought process in. And also the little tower rack I had there had little um, 
little gaps and I'm worried that they might fall into the gap as well. So I see them there doing that. So you can do whatever you want. You can smash them. You can, you can do whatever you want at that next location with those avocados. It's always good when they come alive. They se that seems to work really well. Then we're going to go to our next location. For me, it's a, it's a bath. So like a shower with a bath. And I'm just going to, it's apples. I'm just going to fill the whole bath with apples. I'm just going to pour them into the bath. I'm going to hear the noise as they go poured in. So I hear the sound that they'd make as they would be poured in. And I'm going to think, oh, next time I take a bath, it's almost like I'm um, like, like an animal getting um, cooked in the oven with an apple. <laughs> So the more crazy you get with this stuff, the better. And you'll, you'll start to learn that as we go, as you go along with this. Then I think to go to the next location. So you want to move to the next location. Um, and for the next location, we've got um, bananas. So, but what might be a good idea is on the way to the next location. So you're at the place where the apples are in your head. Uh, and you're going to go to the next location. But what I think we might do is we might make a pathway of bananas that you walk on and they squish into the ground to get to the next location. So grab the bananas in your head, put them on the ground, lay them out and step on them to the next location. If that's up a wall, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. I'm speeding you up here because I reckon you're going to be fine. So then hopefully you see yourself standing in this new location on top of a whole heap of bananas and it's squelchy between your toes. So you can feel the bananas being all yucky in between your toes and you sort of, you bend over and you look down and you see the bananas coming through the toes. And as you're bending over, you feel little things hit you on the head and someone has poured a whole thing of almonds over your head. So as you're looking down at the squelchy banana, you're going to see the almonds just pouring down over the top of you. Can you see that in your head? You've got, you've got the image. You can feel the little almonds hitting you. Good. Then we've only got three more items. So we're just going to rush through them and see if it works. Okay. So the almonds have, because normally we, when you do it on your own, you can go super, super quick. Um, so the almonds have just fallen down around your toes. Um, you're going to go to your next location. So choose your next location. For me, it happens to be a bed. So there's a bed there now. Um, and so I'm just going to, on my bed, I'm going to cover it with oats. And I'm doing like snow angels in the oats. You know, you know, when people, kids do that in the, in the, yeah, and you see that. So I'm going to sort of see myself from above and I've got these oats all around me and I'm doing snow angels. Kids love this stuff, by the way. I, I teach this to my kids when they need to learn things for school and, and they come home and they're just like, my teacher would never know that to take, say these science facts, there's all this strange stuff going in my head. So he's <laughs> lying on the bed doing this with um, oats and making little snow angels. So wherever you are, you can either do the same image, you can just put them on the ground or, you know, whatever wherever you are. Um, and then is everyone seeing themselves in that one? Is everyone in that one, the oats one? Has everyone got themselves? Yeah, so that's easy because we're, because we're in it, we can be the next location. I know that's a bit odd, but we did that with the almonds too. We didn't actually move to a new place. They just fell over our head. So we're doing these little, we're doing these little snow angels in the oats. Um, and I'm just going to go, oh, actually, I'm a bit hungry. And I go, to, I go to eat some oats and I change my mind and think, I feel like pasta. And I just, I just open my mouth and pasta starts pouring into it. And I'm like, wow, it's like it's raining pasta. So whatever sort of pasta you want. And then I'm just going to get up from there and I'm going to go to my nearest window 
If you've got a window nearby, you can do that too, or you can go somewhere else to a different location. And I'm going to look out through the window and go, oh, this window is not quite clean. I can't see very well. Um, and for some reason, I'm going to get some tomato paste and I'm going to rub it all over the window thinking that that's going to make it cleaner and then realise that it's all turned red and the world's red and I'm trying to see through and now I'm wondering if is it blood, what's going on here, everything's red. But it's tomato paste, obviously. You can even take a little taste. <laughs> so you want to basically, you really want to visualise it like you're there. Um, and that's like we were saying, that's because when you when you go to like when you're at some event like you go to um, school or you you're at work you can remember a lot about things that you see you actually see so you you know what everyone wore to work that day you you can remember who ate what for lunch um you can remember all these different things but you'll notice most of what you remember is what you actually saw and that's why this works as well so we just go quickly back through like super super quickly and then we check that everyone's on the same page so We'll go back to our front door. So you're back at your front door now. And you walk just inside your front door, wherever your first location is, you should see bread. And it's probably getting smashed into something with little crumbs falling into all the little bits. Then you go to your next location. I was sticking croissants on the roof and they were falling down onto the floor and making a splat sound and making a buttery mess on my ceiling. Um, then there was the onions. And I don't know what you did for your onions. Mum were rolling down the stairs. Then you should have dancing carrots at your next location. If you can't, if any of these aren't there, really see the location and try and see the image again. And if you need to make it crazier, like make the carrots, you know, that you make it as crazy as you possibly can. Um, then I believe we would have tomatoes. Yep. So smash, I was smashing tomatoes on the wall. So you go to your next location, see it in your head. Then there were potatoes. They were making a dirty mark in my um, sink. Then I saw two avocados doing a handstand on each other. I'm not sure what you saw, but I was hoping they didn't get bruised. Then I saw apples poured into the tub and I was thinking next time I hop in, it's almost like I'm getting roasted. Then I laid out little bananas and walked to my next location while they were squishing under my feet. And I looked down to see it through my toes and I felt little things on my head and saw that there were almonds raining down on me. Then it was the oats, yeah. Then we go to the, the next location and I was making snow angels with oats. I decided I was going to eat some, changed my mind, wanted pasta. So try and follow me in your head where you are as well. So you see the pasta and then I decided to look out the window. I look out the window, it's dirty, so I try and clean it with tomato paste. Yay! So, <laughs> was my Australian accent okay? Are you all, you're all coping? Yeah. Sorry, I speak quite quickly too when I get excited, so I'm trying to slow down for you. Um, so now I want you to, um, you're all on mute, I think. Hang on, there might be, I think. You're now all on mute. Um, so just kind of close your eyes. We can't hear you. We just see you going. Um, and just go to the front door in your head and see if you can walk through and get all the items on the list. I won't look at you. If you got them all right, just give me a thumbs up if you're at the end of it. Yeah. Awesome. Good. <laughs> 